So, uh, so all right, guys. So today agenda is uh, basically what we are going to discuss that you know a real time use case. Okay, so when you are in a network uh, implementation, okay, so let your server is you know. Uh, running into this uh, one uh, isolated vnet and uh, you want to connect from uh, in other server okay so that may be typically you may get uh, some sort of uh, uh, requirement or you know normally if your environment is completely running into the azure so that is the case we are going to use okay so last last call okay so what we did is basically we deployed a vm and try to connect your you know how we are going to connect with you know private network with the bastion services okay so that is typically we are going to do okay so i just want to explore in this diagram first of all Able to see the screen first of all, okay. So, yes, yeah. So we can we can make this even as in a use case based. Okay, so normally uh, your environment is completely running into the Azure. Okay, so that is the one use case, and uh, uh, you your environment is running, you know, in a both the combination hybrid model. Okay. Mm hybrid model also it will sometimes it is going to uh, run your complete infrastructure okay so that is you know one kind of approach okay so and sometimes we may get some requirement for the cross platforms cross platform itself okay so my, let's say you are connecting from you know uh, between the cloud vendors also you may expect that one so you know some workloads is running into the azure and uh, you are running some other you know workloads into the either gcp or you know aws okay so why i'm saying is basically, uh, basically in enterprise level so with respect to you know cost or you know uh, to maintain you know you, if you have some you know licensing kind of thing and a dependency with that you know some services uh, you know lesser price into the uh, uh, google and some prices uh, some futures is you know uh, lesser price with you know futures also so based upon that clients want to move um, in a multi cloud related stuff okay so to extend that one okay scenario okay so i'm just going to exploring about you know azure okay so within the azure if you have a multiple environment okay so for you know production uh, development and uh, qa you are going to maintain into multiple environment you are not going to club all together into the one uh, resource group and one vnet right so you are going to isolate from your network uh, why because uh, if you are if you are not going to isolate that net uh, that in uh, that environment basically everybody is going to connect and do something right so you cannot able to restrict them you know uh, within that time. and the main management uh, perspective also it is it is very difficult to maintain and get it done you know price and all so that's what uh, you just need to have some sort of you know a segmentation or you know like you know isolation from each and every environment okay so that is the case it will came into the picture okay so that is uh, first thing is uh, uh, vnet peering okay so vnet peering see we are you know more focused on the sql okay but uh, how it is dependency with this all this concept uh, you would have to know the backbone is you know networking and the storage but on top of it, you are learning. Okay. So without pillars, if you are going to, you know, construct any house, it won't, you know, long term, it is not going to, you know, work for you. Okay. So at any point of time, it is going to destroy. That's what you just make sure this all the pillars so that you can build it into long term, it is going to sustain. Okay. So in this, you know, context, basically, you are going to learn Azure concepts as well as, you know, Azure SQL DB. Actual start classes, we haven't started any Azure SQL DB as of now. I'm just, you know, still focusing for the infrastructure related on it. Okay. And where this case is go, coming to the picture, we need pairing, as I said. Okay. So you have a, you know, dev environment. Okay. You have a dev environment. 
let's say i would have you no know, development environment okay so development environment you know uh, uh, people that are connecting for the development team or dba team or application team also will go to connect right so you have you know other environment is the production one so uh, broad environment see only for the restrict for the you know deep database administrators and the most uh, of the cases the application owner okay so that is the typical thing you may expect okay now think about it sometime okay so to do some task and you know uh, from development to uh, uh, sql instance uh, connect uh, uh, to production sometimes the production from production to development you need to connect so that is some situation will come uh, after you know exclusing of your credentials and access and the uh, security and uh, level okay but uh, back end connectivity how it is going to happen how we are going to connect and we'll see that one so we have this uh, sql server over here okay so you can you can make this sql server in a development environment okay so it is all about the infrastructure as server you just think about it this is not a platform as a service okay so it is an infrastructure as a service so infrastructure as a service it is a lift and shift kind of method actually okay whatever you are feeding you to the on premises end you feel you know 100% okay so there is no changes at all okay but the only the thing is infrastructure uh, underlying components uh, cloud provider is going to provide you so on top of it backup maintenance and you know scheduling you know, taking off in your database refreshment and all you have to take care of okay so development is uh, one server we have and other server we have just you know keeping into this production one as well okay so the actual requirement is so some of the use cases either the ways we need to connect and validate okay so either the ways we need to connect and validate so you have we are going to connect uh, uh, okay so first of all this is running into the one we need okay so what i want to tell here okay so basically we need one okay and and we need two okay or else you can you may call this one like uh, uh dev vnet and a prod vnet okay likewise also you can able to consider it okay so i'm just going to do here uh dev vnet okay means development environment okay so here is a prd vnet see i'm just focusing the database related stuff okay when this vnet you may deploy databases servers you know sql mi storage uh, vms whatever you want to deploy you can deploy it we are just you know considering at this moment only for the database related stuff okay so here we are trying to connect from you know uh, development to prod prod to development so either the ways we are going to connect and do some some sort of you know scenarios okay this is typically we are going to do okay this is one kind of approach okay so the other kind of approach see this is completely your all the storage networking databases you are into the cloud maintenance okay and we do have some site to site what you call site to site so where it is going to come into the picture into the real time based okay so side to side okay and other use cases you know point to side okay so fourth one is express route express route all right so at this moment in this you know use case we will go to go by using of the vnet vra okay so the the other use case is okay you have some you know uh, side to side and the point to side so when it is going to come into the picture side to side basically you have you know on premises environment okay so in this on premises environment let's say you are some uh, application or the database is still running your on-premises side 
Okay, still running into this on premises set. Okay, I, I'm just going to show you one use case for this one. Okay, so you here it is an on premises. Here it is your on premises. So what we are going to do basically, so most of the uh, time, okay, so let's say your uh, production database here, okay, and uh, and this one of the application, one of the application is running into the development environment, okay, so this is an app one, this is my application server, okay, or else you are running an you know, Azure app as well, okay, apps, application. Or uh, sometimes you have, you know, uh, what we call uh, Azure app service. Okay, so this is a pass services. Okay, what we call it is in a pass services. Sorry. So this service wants to connect from your, you know, on premises okay so if there is a, some databases running you have to connect this one okay so this is the case actually and uh, from on premises also you want to connect so from on premises also you want to connect some uh, databases okay so how how we are going to connect by using of the site to site methods by using of the site to site It's nothing but in a bidirectional uh, uh, connectivity, okay? So it will work as a side-to-side -side bidirectional. You want to connect from on-premises and on-premises to cloud, okay? So Either the ways you can connect in from on premises to cloud and cloud to on premises. Okay. So that is you just need to uh, make sure this site to site connectivity. And what about this, you know, uh, point to site connectivity? So point to site connectivity, the same kind of approach. Okay. So if you want to connect uh, uh, only for, you know, uh, on premises to cloud or on premises to cloud. Okay not direct direction, only one way, one way connectivity, okay, point to site connectivity. So you can use for uh, uh, this one, you can use for point to site connectivity. You are not trying to connect, uh, you know, anything like, you know, bi-directionally, only one single way connectivity, you can uh, uh, use this, you know, point to site connectivity. Then what is the use of the site to site connectivity? You may come into the picture, the question actually. So, if you want to connect a bi-directional way, you can go to go and connect this one, okay? Or else only single way connectivity, you will go to go and connect this one. See, and the express route is, you know, some critical database, some, you know, healthcare and, you know, banking sector, uh, they don't want to use for data transferring from publicly. Okay, so though it is a secure tunnel, but still you require some, you know, uh, secure tunnel to configure it here. Okay, so that is an express route. Okay, basically this this will act as, you know, same uh, side to side connectivity kind of thing. Okay, that also we have an option. Okay, so and also this side to side you can use uh, okay we can use for not only for um, on premises maybe you have one more environment to the uh, gcp or aws okay if you have any gcp and aws also you can connect here okay aws or gcp so this is also one kind of approach to give the side to side configuration side to side configuration here also so there is a multiple, you know, use cases to, you know, real time basis. Okay. So, so where exactly you're going to use that one, that is up to you, but keep in mind, there is a multiple uh, options to explore it as a database administration guy. Okay. Even point to site also can able to connectivity from here. Okay. So as I said, just before this, you know, hybrid model and uh, Azure versus GCP, this is an Azure landscape, right? This is my Azure one. Okay, so Azure cloud here. And here you, as I said, the GCP one. So if it is going to run, 
okay so on premises to cloud it will come into the picture in a hybrid model connectivity and you and, and also you know azure and gcp versus also it is also comes into the same approach hybrid model only okay so like hybrid model in the sense how we are going to do we are doing the same work either it is in work from home or in work from home is but uh, the model that we are currently following the trend is in a hybrid model like two days or three days but uh, task is same right wherever you are going to do the task you are going to have to perform uh, there is no change at all but providing of a you know, service it is different okay so aws or gcp has their own service strategy and you know, pricing and the high availability and all and azure having it is own you know strategies and you know, pricing model features and all okay the one important the one important thing is basically i want to share comparing to the aws and azure Okay, sorry, AWS and the GCP with the network uh, levels, uh, network level, you know, futures and uh, uh, is having more, uh, you know, Azure. End. So, okay, so and it is very easy to configure and implementation, but uh, it is more, you know, uh, towards passive uh, network related stuff. Okay, so AWS started, you know, nearly 15 years back, 10 years back, hardly, but. Uh, last three to four years microsoft is in rapidly you know increasing their uh, you know services okay comparing to aws networking concept azure networking is very good and it is very you know lesser cheaper okay so you have to pay in aws in hourly based and azure is going to give you the minute based and the most important thing is why customers are looking to the uh, sql server in azure vm basically so Microsoft product uh, itself, uh, the SQL Server, right? So that's, that is the flexibility we have in the features prospect of. If you go for the other vendor, he, has, he is a third party vendor. Actually, the actual product is a Microsoft. There you have to take it. And then you is going to you know, give this you know, service kind of thing. Okay, so it does not mean that you know SQL is in Azure only. It is in, in, in all platform, it is available. But the thing is that, you know, providing the support level and then giving the feature flexibility and the configuration administration, comparing to these uh, cloud vendors, Azure is, you know, very good. Okay. So today agenda, what we are going to do, just we have tried to connect, you know, uh, by using of the VNet peering, the, we'll try to connect this, you know, uh, vice, uh, vice versa on the dev and the production VNet end. Okay, so any questions have anyone at uh, this moment before going to proceed actually? No, sir. Uh, sir, I just uh, want to say, can we have one doubt session once in a week? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That is good. Definitely. We'll do that. Yeah. Okay, so, sir, because... Uh, in the networking part i think after doing things from my side i'll i will have few doubts definitely Udit, definitely I, I'm, i'll make it ready for that one actually okay so uh no issue that that you know one hour one and a half hour we can connect that one but uh, my suggestion uh, post this session we'll try to implement it we'll get some hands on okay Yes, okay, sir. but def doubts related will definitely make it ready. Okay, and you were start talking about the documentation means the documents. Yeah, that also I'll uh, upload that actually. Okay, so you are right. Uh, that that I'm going to do today itself. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. All right. So now what I'm going to do, okay, so uh, the last important thing is, uh, I just want to uh, explore it one real time scenario, okay. So I'm just passing. The... So I'm, what, what I did as of now, I just uh, deployed it to VNets. One is for the East US and the other one is a uh, West US region okay so this is a pretty much straightforward only okay as per our you know demo agenda i just created two minutes one is a 
east us and other one is a west us two vnets i created and also the subnets is also created okay so if you can go and check here you could see these two vnets is available so still it is in the uh, deployment is in progress the vnet related stuff okay now it is completed the deployment okay now try to refresh one more time the page so that you can able to see the vnets so that we can able to see the east us and the west us so instead of the vnet you have you know couple of subnets here okay so you can want to add you can add it this is the 10.0 series address space with the subnet name is one okay the other one is you know production vnet which is located in the west unit and the subnet is you have only one subnet if you want to add one more subnet you can add it okay but uh, that is not a big deal okay so now the requirement is now i am just going to deploy the vms into the uh, vnet one end since we have a subnet here so let's go and deploy uh, let's go and deploy the uh, virtual machine okay and uh, you do have some you know database server right you required some database server just go to the all the services and try to uh, fetch that you know uh, database related stuff okay just go to the database and you will get you know uh, sql virtual machines over here okay so this when you are going to opt the sql virtual machines it's basically from marketplace inbuilt templates we are going to utilize right so just i'm using the same thing uh, go to the SQL option. So why I'm using, it's not required to the additional step in a normal traditional method in on-premises, how we are going to do the installation processor. But in a predefined inbuilt template, you no need to install, it is already have the SQL binaries and all. If you can see this, there is a lot of options over here. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, I want to know a difference between managed instance and virtual machine. SQL managed, I mean, both we have a SQL server, no? Yes. So, so while... yes, yeah, SQL server is basically, it is a lift and shift kind of method. Okay, you have an on-premises SQL server. In an on-premises SQL server, you have everything in control on it. Okay. Okay, so OS level control you have, database level control you have, you are going to install and do it, make it ready for you. Okay, for the whatever your requirement is there. Okay, there the underlying hardware and you know software, you are going to maintain and managing things, right? When you go for when you go for the cloud, as I said, we have you know Azure SQL and Azure SQL managed instance, Azure SQL. Uh, VM is there, okay? So in on premises you have like this, right? You have like this VM, okay? So there is nothing changes here. Same like if you want to use, you can go to go and use the Azure SQL. When you go for the Azure SQL, we have two more flavors here, okay? It is, it is, this one is 200%, 100% similar to this one. Okay, you are on premises SQL server. SQL agent is there, SQL server backup, and uh, you know, you want to create any jobs you can able to create. Okay, so this is as same as your SQL server. Okay, 